Wonder Box. Uh, name Captain. First time. How'd it feel? Pretty cool. That's pretty good. That's funny. It's like, this time last year was my first GB vest, and now I'm Captain. That's pretty cool. It's a very, like, uh, ceremonial thing. Someone's kind of just got to do it and tick a box, I think. But uh, I'll take it to the grave. So, yeah, <laughs> pretty pleased with that one. Yeah, I think what's, what's really special about an event like this is the team nature of it. We kind of got, like, 40 athletes, maybe 5, 10 staff. So it's a really big group of people, and it's a group of people that don't always come together apart from this time of year there's a lot of anticipation for it everyone wants to make that team at Liverpool in order to come and have such a great time here because you know that the the social atmosphere and kind of how happy and happy you are and kind of with like-minded people is just as good as the actual racing opportunity so yeah the vibes are really good with kind of everyone having a bit of banter and sort of um, like being relaxed and understanding that you've got to be happy in order to race well but tomorrow when we have the race I think it'll kind of switch a little bit people will start to get in the zone and sort of that's where you see that the top athletes that we have can balance um, enjoying themselves but then understanding when they need to perform and that's something that I've definitely learned as I've come on these trips. You went to the, the course earlier, how's it looking? The course is, is bad, like <laughs> that's the only way I can describe it. It's going to be amazing for spectators and the atmosphere is going to be great, it's so twisty turning, you're turning back on yourself, it's uphill, downhill, round corners, um, very undulating. And it's only 1500 meters per lap so you know by the time you've gone around that six times you're kind of going to learn where you can run fast where you can run slow and you're going to see people so much around the course that yeah i'm hoping touch wood that six or seven k of it i should just be like in the zone and kind of then it'll start hurting if i pace myself well but yeah that's easier said than done it's going to be a muddy one so what are the team's chances as is tradition, Great Britain will take a full team to the European Championships with under-20, under-23, mixed relay and senior teams across the male and female categories. In total, this means 40 athletes will compete for their country this weekend. As well as individual medals, like any cross-country race, this event has a team aspect. In every race, the top three athletes will score for their team, meaning if you finish second, you would get two points, 6th would get you 6 points and 14th would get you 14 points. These three scores will be added together and the team with the lowest overall score will be crowned champions of Europe. I think I was very nervous before the race. I put a lot of pressure on myself and there was a lot of pressure on our under 20 women team to pull through as we had great potential and it was just whether we could execute it on the day, doing the best as we could individually to pull the team through. The course itself was very muddy and a bit hilly, but I think that definitely um, suited me. I like a few hills and we're used to the mud in England, so couldn't complain there. It was a lot muddier than I'd liked um, on the day as there had been races the day before, but with 18 mil spikes, I wasn't slipping around too much. The atmosphere was amazing. There were crowds of people lining the whole course, cheering on literally the whole way around. So that definitely pulled me through when things got tough. Overall, I think the event was amazing and I'd definitely go, even if I wasn't racing, I'd try and get there to cheer everyone else on.
maintenant à 4 en tête de l'épreuve. 4 athlètes en tête de l'épreuve. Et voici le passage de Simon Jeuquien qui fait une excellente course. Deux tours pour Simon Jeuquien de 500 mètres effectués. Il est en train de faire une excellente My initial thoughts going into the race due to the conditions of it being so muddy was that it would be quite a leveller in terms of the quicker 1500 meter guys might not be as good on this sort of surface. Um, I think from a team perspective, I thought we had an outside shot of a medal. Um, and I think that probably depended on how I did on first leg and whether I was able to keep in touch with the leaders, which I was pretty confident of doing due to having a decent 1500 meter time and, and having some cross country pedigree in my background. On your marks. Under 23, 5,000 meter champion, Megan Key. Thank you. 
Yeah, the atmosphere was totally electric. There were people at every single bend and straight um, just screaming. I literally couldn't hear myself think. I had flares going off either side of me, people sh screaming and shouting. I literally felt like I was in a riot. Um, it was great to see there was so many, there was so much support from everyone, especially those from back home who came up to Brussels to watch. My initial thoughts walking around the course, I thought it was going to be a lot drier than I thought it was, but then after about 30 minutes of people walking around, it just got completely churned up. So that kind of changed my perspective a lot. Uh, going into it, obviously, had the likes of Rory, Matt, the Frenchman, who picked up a medal the year before, so the field was stacked. And off the back of the trial, I didn't have the most confidence, so my tactics going in is to just try and get out hard, but then sit back and let others take the lead, and then just try and wind it in about three quarters of the way on the last lap. Um, throughout the, the race, uh, it was just a case of picking the best sign and making sure I didn't work too hard on the mud and then recover on the drive, harder port parts of the course if there were it to be any. So going into the race, I think I was quite excited about the prospect of it being loops, mostly because in the NCAA, uh, we usually did a lot of 2K loops for the cross-country races. So I think I was feeling quite confident about the idea of breaking it down into six loops. Um, and the distance, I think I was quite excited about it being 9K. Nothing really to do with the fact that it was equal to the men, but more because it felt like it being a little bit longer than the usual cross-country races would probably be an advantage for me um, because I see myself as more of a strength runner so I think that um, throughout like a longer race I'd probably be able to wear down people um, so yeah then when I saw the course I was quite happy with it I think I liked the sharp turns um, the elevation I thought was pretty good and then out of everything I think I was most freaked out about the jumps I think I was pretty stressed because they're a lot bigger than I thought they would have been um, and I think I was kind of scared of the idea of doing three in a row so it comes together, uh, which is probably a little bit surprising given that I've just recently taken up sequel this year. Um, but yeah, so I was pretty happy when they took out the jumps, to be honest. Ladies and gentlemen, Um, I mean, just building up his strength over time has been like pretty crucial, and um, I mean he's uh, he's pretty hard-headed and uh, can get the work done. So yeah, going from the 1500 to to 9k cross, I think um, he's embraced that fully, and I think that's really important. Yeah, I mean, like what I always say and what I like to say to a lot of people I work with, and especially Callum, is like just go out there and and give it the best on your day, and with tomorrow and the course being muddy, undulating. Um, it's hard to put like a very quantitative like, kind of point on that. So as long as he can get out there and execute what he does in every race, and that's just be competitive and put himself in a good position, I think um, you know he's gonna do great. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, Callum's first uh, senior senior vest for cross country um, over the long course, uh, coming from the the shorter distance racing. So I think you know the experience he has experience, um, you know international experience, but. At this distance, he doesn't have that, and you can't underestimate the people who've been doing this for years and years. You know, it's only been a few years for Callum, and um, yeah, so that's going to be the, the toughest hurdle to, to get over.
on your marks. Hey Callum, compose, compose. Let's go, Cal. Go, Callum, one more. Let's go, Callum, one more. Come on. Yeah, six o'clock. Man, that was hard. Um, yeah, it, I'm disappointed in not how I ran. I'm, I'm, a, I'm disappointed in how the course was, in the sense that I feel like I could have done better and the course just really didn't suit me. But everyone's running on the same course, so it's not really an excuse. Like, I just felt my glutes were burning. I just felt tired from like the second lap. Um, and I'm not annoyed, I'm not angry because it's not like I did something stupid, it's not like I went off too fast or I gave up or anything, like, I stuck to my plan, which was to start slow and hopefully get faster, and I just got slower. Um, I think I finished 59th out of 90 in the end, so, like, look, I could have easily given up, like, I was the, the last GB guy, so it's not like I was counting for the team, so it would have been easy just to fall on the floor or give up or whatever, but, like, the minimum requirement should be always to finish, and, like, when you're representing GB and... There's so many blokes at home that would have killed to get my best. Yeah, like the minimum requirement is always to finish. When there's like so many people at home that would love to represent Great Britain once in their life, I'm not going to come here and just give up, basically. So like, I'm proud of myself. I, I, I can swear like to myself, I gave 100%, like I gave my maximum effort, but my maximum effort just was like a poorer result than what I wanted to. I don't think I could have executed anything differently. I think like, my lack of strength just got exposed. Like we've talked on this channel and in other videos about how I'm trying to develop more strength and trying to do longer distance stuff to, to benefit my middle distance. And in the Liverpool video, I think I would probably just had the race of my life. I had like a 10 out of 10 race and I got through it. And here with the step up in calibre and also a much tougher course with kind of hills and mud, I think I just came unstuck, but yeah. The, <laughs> Athletes of every level need to get spanked every now and then, and there's no athlete out there that doesn't just get battered sometimes. And today I got battered, but it means I'm gonna go home and train hard, get ready to come back, not necessarily in this race, but come back to other races and, and wanna beat people and, and perform well. So yeah, it's I'm not sulking, I'm like gonna enjoy the rest of the event and make sure I have fun. I'm not gonna be that guy that's walking around like, you know, with his chin on the floor, because 
that, you know, I've come this far, we've come 59th in Europe. In the grander scheme of things, that's a good result. In the grander scheme of things, I've had an amazing 2023. Like, I'm a way better athlete than I ever could have imagined this point last year. So I'm proud in that sense, but I'm not going to celebrate just like finishing. I'm not going to pat myself on the back for finishing a race. Like that's a minimum requirement. Um, yeah, just not an amazing result, but great for the team because we're only two points off getting a bronze medal. Um, like some of the seniors performed outstandingly. So yeah, it was it was it was um, not a fun experience for me individually, and I really did struggle, but collectively as a senior men's team like we came fourth in Europe so that's a great result. Brussels 2023 Spa European Cross Country Champion representing Great Britain and Northern Ireland it is If you weren't supporting Team Great Britain this weekend, what other uh, country would you would you be a supporter the of? The USA. No, <laughs>